Hey, everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Craig. Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm Craig. Hello. <laughs> yeah. So for folks that don't know you, Craig, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? So that is a good question. I'm Craig Janke. I am a, I'm in Chicago. So uh, yeah, just outside of Chicago, about 30 miles straight west. Uh, I am a senior manager over our M3C, M365 365 consulting practice for WM Reply. So I, I lead up a team of consultants and try to get business and try to build things in uh, SharePoint mostly. You have, right now it's Viva Connections, all of that coming together. Yep. Craig is one of those folks that people that know Craig is, it's one of those people where a lot of people just be, you know, like assumed he was already an MVP for a long time. And like, well, what are you doing? Like, who did you piss off at Microsoft, Craig, that to, to take so long? I don't know. I think when we were talking about it uh, previous to this on another call, I'm just not what I would call a very big self promoter. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of fine to do the work and, you know, the whole, if anybody notices, they notice if they don't, they don't really care. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> That's one of the, you know, it, it's funny, uh, you know, and, and, people that know me I mean, you might be surprised to know this like i really struggled with that for years i had managers at jobs that are like you're doing all this stuff but it's not visible and i'm like what do i care if it's visible like you're my manager you know what i'm doing i'm doing this work uh and and so it was something that i had to adjust to and i just created habits to you know to promote that or to make it more visible um to to people of, of the things that I was doing. And it's, so it, it, it is a learned trait. Yeah. And it's something, so even now, like I got the MVP and my, like a couple of people at my work, I told them they were excited about it. Right. They're like, Oh, that's cool. And they're bringing it up all the time. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I feel uncomfortable <laughs> about it. I, I have no real reason why, but um, I do think it's funny because when I, my, one of my, one of my direct reports found out, he said, yeah, I was, uh, I see. I posted it on LinkedIn. That's how he found out. But he's like, I'm sitting with my relative, with my family watching TV, and I saw, oh, Craig, he became an MVP. That's awesome. And they're like, what's that mean? <laughs> you know, so if you're not in the space, then nobody knows who you are. So yeah. anyway, and so. Well, it's it, I, and I know. And if you go out and do like search the old videos, there's a couple of Microsoft, you know, like the really corny, over the top, yeah. you know, MVP things. But but you're right. It's it's. I mean, where it's really meaningful, if you work within, uh, especially within the Microsoft sector, right? And and you're looking for expertise, or you're looking for a speaker or an author or something. I mean, yeah, so you know that, hey, there's a certain caliber of person. They've got a certain amount of experience that Microsoft has recognized them for that. But most people on the street have no idea. Yeah, what, what my I mean. wife, uh, she thought it was nice, <laughs> yeah. but she understands all the, all the work that I put behind it, but yeah, she, you know, it's not, doesn't, it doesn't like fully resonate with her. I don't think, but well, it's, you know, the other thing too, is I've started to, it made me pay attention to, uh, uh, the uh, similar awards and other technologies. Yes. I've that's, I've a lot of Xamarin that. MVPs and Salesforce MVPs and, and things about that now. So, you know, looking at that, again they're run very similar to the microsoft program yeah so but yeah. uh yeah so uh, yeah it does make you be aware and then i i like encouraged other people right to to just kind of do as i say not as i do like, like you should be promoting yourself more like when i talk to my my co-workers and things like that's a good idea have you thought about presenting that or something like that so. yeah so what what was kind of your path? I mean, uh, so we were joking about it. You know, we we've known each other for a long time. Uh, I participated, I think, in the first and second of the uh, suburbs event. Yeah, um, first couple years of that. So mine was kind of a long, long, interesting path that I actually me and uh, Ralph Rebus, who's also an MVP, and he was the one that nominated me. Um, well, we were talking about it. Oh, we've done a presentation on how you can do this. We did it at one of uh, 
Oh, we did it at the Power Platform Conference in Orlando over the summer. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't go to it, but Ralph could go to it because his company would pay for the bill. So, so he phoned a friend in and we talked. To, so it was actually a hybrid presentation. It was pretty cool. But so it's my is, is long. I went to a SharePoint Saturday that was in Chicago. Um, I want to say 2010, 2011. It was at Illinois Benedictine College. And like I had always been interested in speaking and that kind of thing. So I went to all the dot net user groups and kind of, I, you know, kind of in awe of how people could just get up and do a presentation. And I never knew how it really got started or how you get started into that practice. Right. Like I could write a blog or whatever, but I didn't know how you even made it into events. So um, I talked to a couple of the speakers there um, while they were presenting in between class because I didn't really move around classrooms. It was like the sessions that I wanted were all right after each other. So I talked to a few of those those speakers. Um, Ruben, you probably know him. Um, yeah. And I think I was at the that the, that same event, the Chicago yeah, event. Richard Harbridge. So yeah. they so I, Richard per. Richard performed, then one of them, not performed, presented, and then Ruben went after that, and then so I talked to them about how they get started, and they're like, you just go over to user groups and things like that, um, and submit, people are always looking for that, so um, Andrew, what was Andrew's name, um, yeah, it escapes me, Connell, Andrew, what, was it Andrew Connell, no, but also last name with a C, he no longer does SharePoint, he wrote a book, the SharePoint in six he was with those guys hmm. um it's gonna kill me now um but he, i went to his presentation on uh what is it called file shares not file shares um, that's a thing file shares yeah no i know that but it was what are they called document sets, okay, How do you doc ah, sets? Oh, okay um which it was a pretty good thing but he gave me his twitter and i was you know i started following him on twitter and one night in the middle of like, I don't know, he, he tweeted, Oh, I'm starting this user group for just kind of SharePoint people who are in the know. Uh, I was a better way of putting it. So all these people he was going to invite who were the speakers in the Chicago area. Um, he called it the SharePoint garage. And he's like, well, unfortunately I am starting this at 11 o'clock on a Friday. So who's going to, so nobody will see it. And I just happened to be like checking my phone and I was like, oh, it sounds like an awesome idea. I would go. And so he invited me into that. And then actually I kind of like was sending out the emails and stuff. So I kind of was like cold ran it with him for a little while. Um, so then I kind of got into the user group, but it was downtown Chicago and it was in the AI building that we would have these meetings. And mm -hmm. um, there was some stuff that happened and we just kind of fell off doing it and I don't live in Chicago. I live in the suburbs, 35 miles out. And I got tired of going to the city to go to all the vets. So I was like, well, um, maybe I can just start my own user group up here. And I like, we did it in the city and we didn't really, I didn't really think about it, but you don't have to ask permission to start these groups, right? right. Which I don't think people know. Like they're always, well, how did you get started? Who'd you ask? And I said, well, I went up to meetup.com and I just, put in a user group and I reached out to some people who I had emails on and Robert Bogue agreed to come out and be the, the keynote speaker to our first event, which I never really expected because he's still a big name, but at that time he was like the big name in SharePoint or one of the big names. Right. Yep. So um, he came out and presented and then I felt bad because it was only like about six or seven people there, but he seemed to enjoy his stuff. Um, so I, I started that way. I had a user group it was the Elgin SharePoint user group. Um, and then I went to another user group meeting called the share a pint user group and they met in Downers Grove, which Microsoft has an office about 20 minutes away from where I live. And at that time we were talking, I was talking to people over there and they're like, well, there's no, there hasn't been a SharePoint Saturday around in two years. Anybody know about it? Yep. And I said, I'll check into it. And if I find anything out about it, I'll help you throw it. So we emailed the SharePoint Saturday people, took them a while. And they said, no, if you want to have one, the other group was there we didn't get any response from so we i had a contact at devry university so he let us have the event for the, the facility for free so then we did our first sharepoint saturday chicago suburbs in 2013 and then we've just been 
running them annually, sometimes semi-annually. It depends since then. Yeah. Um, and that's really how I got my start in between there, write blogs. Um, and then about four or five years ago, I think I was, um, I was working at a company that would actually pay me to go to other SharePoint Saturdays mm -hmm. and present there. So, and that's, I guess, I think that's the big hurdle um, for a lot of people. If you want to make that kind of commitment, if your company will pay for you, right, which ones can you go to? So, yeah. Um, yeah. So then, and then, so then um, I met Jay Leesk and we started doing like podcasts for a um, so we've done some stuff together. We do a bunch of sessions. Um, I had I, I I had done enough in the Chicago that the 365 Educon people reached out to me mm -hmm. um, about presenting at their conference, or at least helping them hype their conference. So then I made it into, I guess, what we would call that circuit of conferences because they have like three or four. So still trying to break into the big ones like the the Ignites or anything like that. But um, yeah. Yeah, so, well, which will become easier now that because they give preference to MVPs. So um, that will be awesome. Yeah. And get, get the incident there. Well, you know, it's funny because th there's a lot of people like uh, you, you don't just, uh, you know, start speaking at, uh, you know, SharePoint Saturday. Well, formerly SharePoint Saturdays. A lot of them are rebranding. Mm -hmm. Like we're yeah. renaming ours in Utah. It's Collab Days Utah instead of. Yeah, ours is now M365 Chicago. Yeah. Or for the last yeah. three years. So with, with that change, yeah, we, had, and we also moved ours to Friday too. So there was that change, but uh, we did too as well. Yeah. yeah so with, with, with changes like that, it, it's uh, it's been a bit disjointed. I know Microsoft has their community uh, initiative and they're trying to centralize calendar around some of the events. So you could go to the community days dot, is it org? I think it is dot org. Yeah. And, and, and do that. And there's collab days and there's other places, but um but no, I mean, you don't have to do a lot of traveling to get involved. Like you could just no. be a you know, virtual if speaker. If you're a virtual speaker involved with your user group, and if there is a, a local event, like reach out, no one's going to turn down volunteers. No, you just need to show up. And, and when you get assigned a task, do it. Oh, and I, like I said, you know, that's a great way. But if you can't find any of that, it is so easy to do your own thing. Yeah. But, um, oh, Andrew Clark was the person I was talking oh, okay. about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, so. But see, that's a, that's true, too. Is like, It could be a user group, like, within your company, if you allow external people in, but to get together, do something at lunchtime, it, it can be even more casual, where it's people where you don't, maybe don't have speakers initially, but you're getting together at a, a restaurant where everybody's getting together and just talking, and it's more of a networking type thing. There's yes. Like, Really? And, and that was really the one that I was telling you I went to was in Downers Grove. That was, it was called share. Um, it was a more of a share a pint group. So we just kind of went and round tabled. So if there was enough people, 10 people at a table and every 10 people, we would add another table and, hmm. um, and just have some beers. And we'd have a, a, like a topic, almost, I want to take this from uh, Toastmasters, a topic tender who would, you know, say, okay, we're going to talk about this topic. We're going to talk about it for this long. So, um, here's the networking table. Here's the admin table. Here's the, the developer table. And this is the user group, the power users table. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. And then you got to, I think one of the biggest benefits of it and why I started to get into, so I knew like programming and that kind of stuff. But when I got into SharePoint, I didn't know a lot, right? It was a big change for, for me. Or, um, and then the job I got in it, was like I was expecting to join a SharePoint team and then I was the SharePoint person. There was no team. Hmm. So it's like, okay, I gotta know everything. And I don't know how to do that. But now when I started doing the the user group and the networking type of occupation and even the SharePoint Saturday stuff and Twitter, right? Just following the right people on Twitter, it was like, I've got people I can ask questions, you know, those those resources that you don't normally get. So that's what I when I talk to like my newer employees or kids coming out of college, I'm like, you don't understand how important networking can be to the success of your career. Um, just in, in who you meet, who you can ask questions, um, job opportunities, and if nothing else, right? Just, I, I already said, if it's SharePoint, my wife doesn't know much about it. Um, most of my family doesn't understand what I do. So if I want to have somebody to, you know, celebrate things that I've done with, or if 
I've got questions or things that are just irritating me, like I'm better off talking to you because you understand it. You've been there, right? Or somebody who's in the field going to talk to my brother who's a pharmacist. You know, we he gets customer service, but he doesn't get technical. But the same way if he started talking to me about drugs, right? I'm like, yeah. I just know I take two a day. You know, you know, I have to say on that note that it was such a great day when a, a few years back where my wife, uh, her company rolled out Office 365 yeah. and she had some questions and for like half a day, I refused to help her at all. I was like, no, no, like you didn't care about what I did. Uh, <laughs> you, you didn't like my listening to my stories about stuff or talk to you about tech. Now you come to me for help. Like, no, no, (laughs) it was an hour ago. I was downstairs helping my showing my wife how to open a file in teams so that it opens in the app. And then I had to prove to her that having it side by side screen um, that the app could be here. We could still open the file in the browser. And that if you update one, it will automatically update the other. She didn't, she was like, she had no trust that if she opened it up in the app, that because she would open it up in the browser and then she would click it on open an app and then it pops that little thing on and you could telling you you could shut the browser. But she's again like, so worried that it's not saving back. I'm like, look, that's how you do it. <laughs> so. It's well, I, I think that it's there's some legitimate trust issues because of years past OneDrive issues. Yes. <laughs> but but yeah, but it generally works the way it's supposed to these days. Yeah, so that that's it. I mean, I'm not to disparage my wife. She's awesome at she's at advertising and she's awesome at PowerPoint. And like, if I need a PowerPoint presentation done, she can do a hundred page deck in like two hours, where I can do two slides in two hours. So yeah. there's the people that. So my wife is a designer, so she her presentations are amazing looking, you know, and. Uh, and when I go for, for help, then she does the, well, how much does that pay? You know? <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we have a great relationship that way. So <laughs> keep, keep things separate. Well, Craig, so what kind of stuff, what are, what are your topics? What are you passionate about? Like uh, focused on these days? I wish I knew. <laughs> so, it Lately it has been Viva. So I got my MVP in business applications. So PowerPoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was not PowerPoint, Power Apps, Power Automate. Yeah, And that was because a long time, I was trying to get into that that field, right? And I've been doing a lot with that, especially when they deprecated SharePoint designer workflows. Then I helped a lot of customers like move all those to Power Automate and create some apps and some pretty cool apps around that. Still doing that a little bit. I like to do that. Um, I was, a lot of my presentations around that were more, the governance of that and best practices and and things like that and some are on dataverse and getting started with dataverse and, and creating teams for that um but what i've fallen into with this job that i've been at about nine months is we do a lot of internet stuff so it's um well i like to say yeah internet so sharepoint online but not SharePoint online, as we used to think about it, is like, oh, we go and we create an internet using SharePoint. Um, now it's throwing the Viva Connection wrapper on it, putting it in Teams, and thinking about that frontline worker experience and what kind of cards you can use, um, adaptive cards you can use, or the Viva cards that you can use to present that information. It really kind of becomes that full internet that I think we've been looking for for years, where doesn't matter if you access it through the browser or you can access it through Teams. And then the mobile experience, we've been doing some really cool things with frontline frontline worker apps Mm -hmm. um, to let people who wouldn't normally be able to, or normally you wouldn't think as Teams users can now use Teams. Like we have a a pretty cool app that we developed for Disney for, it's based in Teams. So they only have to have Teams on their phone, but now they can use that for the resort people who are cleaning the rooms and things like that. So we're right now we're piloting it in a couple of rooms, but they can go and do like a checklist. They can take pictures of things that they see along the way on the rooms and all that kind of information. And that can be stored. Yeah. In teams. And then we can run some workflows and stuff like that. So I've been doing a mix of that. We're still doing, we still, as it's office 365, if somebody needs an app, like we've done some room booking apps, we've done some 
project management apps where um, I want to call it project managing app, but an app to measure projects. I have a, a, a manufacturing company that if anybody wants to submit, hey, I need this this part fixed, or if I need this, I, I have an idea that I think would help this this manufacturing process go better, they can submit it through the app. And then if it gets taken on as a project, then we can assign people to that project. We can add our documents to it. So it all lives in teams. It's pretty cool. So I've been doing that. Um, and then talking, I was one of the first people to go through the Viva Insights training, so the workplace mm -hmm. analytics. Um, and I've still had my hand really well into that. So I do a lot of my talks around Viva Insights um, and how workplace analytics or now workplace insights, they're finally rebranding that work. And then the whole, just using the whole Viva suite in general, um, me and Jay Lee do a, have been doing a workshop, actually kind of partnering with uh, a couple other MVPs, Mark Rackley and Stephanie Donahue, where we will do this is an overview of how Aviva, although it's getting really big, so it's getting hard to squeeze into that half day. Yeah. And then they do, so me and Jay will do that. This is what Aviva is. This is why you should care about it. And then they'll do more like, this is how you use it in the wild, right? Yeah. This is These are the use cases for it that we've actually implemented. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see it because there's now eight experiences and they're going to be adding more. They've said they're going to add more. And I think we've heard whispers of some things. And yeah. some some of the things we've heard may not be standalone. Viva, you know, uh, again, I always experiences have to do the air quotes um, or modules or whatever you want to call it. Right. Sub products within the Viva brand. Um, some of the things that they're talking about could end up just being features, subsets of the existing ones. But they've they've already said, hey, there's more coming. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be an interesting mix because they, you know, they have like connections, insights, topics, learnings, goals is the big one that people are excited about. And those are pretty much intended for everybody. Right. And yeah. then you have sales, which is bringing dynamic CRM right into teams, which is more aimed for role based. Right. So if you're a customer service rep, if you're a sales rep or somebody that deals with that, then you're going to want that, but not necessarily everybody in the organization who's yeah uh, who's an office worker is going to need that. So I, I picture yeah. more of those. I just don't know what those would be. Well, exactly. Oh, because Amplify is a great example. It's it's internal yeah. comms. It's you know yes. like internal marketing and comms people. Yeah. So I think you're going to see more along the lines that are like HR solutions. There could be eventually like specifically mag you know uh, like industry focused like uh, uh like manufacturing it yes. something where it taps into the other sides of uh of you know, like the ERP side of dynamics and i mean yeah there's a lot that could happen with that well yeah and that, and then that gets interesting because i didn't until you mentioned it i never really thought about it but because uh, i just think of dynamics 365 i hate to say this but i just think of dynamics 365 as a crm system but there are a lot of modules that now yep and i really only knew about that when i was studying for like the the power platform architect role and started to think about the sort the sales module and the customer service module and the field services module and the marketing module and and all of that. So they have um, customer service modules. So they have all of these modules that you can now tap into, especially if you're building a power app um, and, and yep. need to get at that data, right? So yep. um, yeah, they're gonna, I imagine, as you said, bring more, more of that into the view suite. Now, yep. the question always gets, and this is where we run into roadblocks as consultants, how do you pay for all of that? Because they don't just give it away cheap. Right. right. Well, that's always that's always like the first question is people say, well, how much you're talking about this to Microsoft? What are the, the what license model? Like, is yeah. it free? Do I need require E5? Is it additional cost in, 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 on top of E5? Yes. Like, what so, what is that? So, um, yeah, that's, even at nine dollars a person, that gets pretty hefty because, yeah. oh, yeah, we were talking about it um, for some company. Nine dollars a person was going to end up being at seven I want to say almost 700,000 a year more. And then it's like, well, are they going to pay for that and then pay for us to implement it and to do the change management around it? Because that's something that, that I actually like about the company that I'm at now is we are heavy into change management and all of our, all of our proposals come with a change. Almost all of them come with some kind of change management behind it. We're really good at it. 
Yeah. Um, whereas other places I've worked is, well, yeah, we can do it technically, but kind of throwing it over the wall and hope it gets implemented. Yeah. Um, but that costs money. And that's usually the first thing where somebody wants to cut that out of budget. Right. So I always, uh, you know, there's a, a, a Buckleyism, something, a quote, I, I kind of self quote that I always do it. And I actually had it in a conversation, used it in a conversation this morning, but, uh, but well, basically to paraphrase it, it's, uh, um, I was looking for the exact quote, but, uh, you know, companies that are good at change management will have a distinct advantage over their, all their competitors. That is, uh, that should be a core competency of, you know, consulting organizations. And yet it isn't with a lot. Yes, no, I, I totally agree. Um, and, and you're, um, I guess you're starting to see some of that now too, or not that specifically, but change management, you got to be good at. The other thing is you got to be good at looking towards the future. And I think so many customers, and especially where you're seeing this little downturn are just looking at today, right? And, and maybe the end of the month. And if you're lucky, the end of the quarter, and they're not looking at the long term um, and, and planning that. And those are the customers, those are the companies that don't do well in the long run either, right? They, they, they're they good for a short burst, but now you have a downturn in the market and what do they do? They cut everybody and they, they don't know how to weather the storm right. instead of seeing the opportunity that's there to grow. Yep. Well, agree. Well, Craig, really appreciate your time today. For folks- I appreciate you having me on because like I said, I'm not good at, <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> I'm not good we'll at getting it. myself out there, so. Well, it's, uh, you know, hey, there's always, uh, I'm always happy to, to, as we've talked about before, but always to talk about uh, advice for that. It's about creating healthy habits. Yes. It's, it's not. Um, I've it, got it on my list of things to do, if that makes you happy. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think of it as like, a, a, I mean, it is self-promotion, but a, a, I guess it's a, it's a marketing, it's the marketing guy in me that wants to rephrase that. That sounds very narcissistic, you know, to self-promote it. You are. But building it, your brand is there you go. Lovely, but, That's, oh. yeah but you you definitely want to surface that information and and make it easily searchable findable so yes. that people can get that uh, you know again i don't care so much about the accolades is i you know, create the content i want people that need that content to be able to find it yes um, well it is nice if they're consuming because nothing like putting out a blog post right and seeing two people read it three people yeah. And, and actually, I think one of the coolest things in some of the stuff we do is like somebody will ping you a question on a blog you wrote three or four years ago. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things that ever happened to me was I was working at a consulting company at the time. Uh, yeah, I don't want to name who they are, but I was working at them. We took over a project from Deloitte. And so they gave us. The, the company we took it over from gave us the documentation for Deloitte and on how to do the app and get it installed in the environment. They cited a blog post I wrote. So I was like, look, I'm in here. Yeah. That's <laughs> so. nice. Well, you know, it's one of the things I, I, I think I mentioned this last time we talked, but uh, I, uh, so I'm an ex- extensive uh, OneNote user. So every blog, every article, everything's in OneNote. And when it's published, I will put take the published URL, put it in it, and then archive that page. Right. So when I go and research stuff, um, uh, you know, like a new topic or something, one of the first places I do is I go do search within OneNote. Like, have I written about this topic? Because I write enough, I do enough that yeah. I don't remember everything that I wrote. Um, and so I'll go searching for that. And so there's a couple of times where I've done internet searches and I've found stuff. I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. I opened it up. It's like, oh, I wrote that five <laughs> Like, oh, I, I've seen that. Or when I'm searching for questions, that's one I hate. I, I, I had this one. Uh, I had something come up and I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I'm like, okay, let me search for the question. And two, three years later, I had posted that same question on a blog post and nobody answered it and on a support page. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, apparently nobody's figured this out yet. There was a lot of, there was a lot of following comments to see what the result was but yeah yep i run into that a lot with the amas that i do it, I, we i love trying to tackle those too the unanswered questions and trying to answer it what i'm not good at is when we've answered it and then taking a link from my video and going back and posting it there but yeah i gotta get better at that but but that's why those people just need to keep searching and they'll find now the content <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, well, Craig, really appreciate your time. Folks, I appreciate to you having me. Out to you, contact you. you. What are the best ways to reach you? Um, on LinkedIn is usually the best way to, to get me. So just searching Craig Jenke. I am the one that works at WM Reply. I think you might hit a couple of teachers that live near me. There's also a musky, or a walleye fisherman um, at in Appleton, Wisconsin, or Tech Jenke, T-E-C-H-J-A-H-N-K-E on Twitter are usually the best two. Um, or my first dot last name at Gmail, if anybody wants that. So um, I answer emails. Those are usually the biggest ones. Excellent. Well, it's great talking to you. We'll, we'll see you soon. All right, cool. Thanks. Wow! <laughs>